Hello everyone, I'm Mike. And I'm Luke! And we'd like to start off by thanking everyone that checked out our roster analysis video. So, we went through all the previous fighters and their chances of getting back into Smash Bros. And this time, we'd like to focus on potential newcomers and their chances of getting in. Instead of just saying whether or not we'd like to see a specific character get in, we'll analyze fan-favorite newcomers one at a time. I'll be listing reasons that may increase their chances of being playable in the new game. And I'll be listing reasons why they may not make an appearance as newcomers. Okay, so let's begin. King K. Rule. He's the main villain in most Donkey Kong games. He appeared as a trophy in previous Smash titles, the Kremlings appearance Smash Run, and tons of signature attacks can make up his moveset. Also, we need more villains. He has not been part of any of the new Donkey Kong games, including Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze. Nintendo may be trying to distance themselves from rare-made Donkey Kong games, and he might be excluded in favor of another Donkey Kong rep. Dixie Kong. She's the most popular Donkey Kong character after Donkey Kong and Diddy. She appeared as a trophy in previous Smash games. She was playable in Tropical Freeze and was planned to bring in Brawl as a Diddy Dixie team. Also, we need more female reps. Dixie may have only been considered as a Diddy Dixie team up. Her moveset may be too close to Diddy's, and she might be excluded in favor of another DK rep, like King K. Rool. Shulk. He's the main character in a franchise with no Super Smash Bros. reps. He has unique weapon based combat and a new Xenoblade coming out soon. And also there's a puzzle swap puzzle for Xenoblade Chronicles. He could be considered another sword fighter, and we already have a lot of those. Xenoblade is gaining popularity, but it's still not super well known. Chorus Kids. They would definitely have a unique playstyle and moveset. They're a representative for a new franchise in Super Smash Bros., and they would have really cool rhythm-based attacks like Donkey Kong's Final Smash. And there's a rhythm heaven enemy confirmed in Smash Run. The character may not translate to Smash Bros. well, the only reason people consider these guys a character is because of the Gamatsu League. Sceptile. There are Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire remakes coming soon, and he just received a Mega Evolution. He could also represent a Grass type in place of Ivysaur. We already have four Pokemon reps, not including Jigglypuff, which I believe to be back in the game, and he has never been in a previous Smash game, not even as a Pokeball Pokemon. Zoroark. His illusion ability would make for an interesting moveset. He's the Lucario of black and white, he could represent the 5th generation of Pokemon, and the 3DS just got a black and white Pokemon stage, and castle. Again, we already have 4 Pokemon reps. He has less of a following than Mewtwo and Sceptile, and black and white is not the latest gen anymore. Bomberman! He appeared on practically every Nintendo platform, except the Wii U and 3DS. He's an iconic video game character, like after Mario, Sonic, Mega Man, and Pac-Man. He'll probably have a bomb-based moveset, that's pretty cool. He's technically a third-party character, and we already have a lot of those. Other than bombs, his moveset might be limited, and they might save him for a future installment. The last time Nintendo had a Bomberman game was in 2009, and there was a Bomberman 3DS game, but it mysteriously got cancelled. Paper Mario He has a unique character design, and he would have a really cool RPG-inspired moveset, so he won't be a clone. The 3DS has a Paper Mario-inspired stage, and he's the Mario equivalent to Toon Link. And also, Paper Mario trophies have been in previous Smash titles. The Mario franchise already has five representatives, and he may be too similar to Mr. Game & Watch, with all his flatness. Bowser Jr! He's the Bowser equivalent to Diddy Kong. He would be a staff-based fighter, like with his paintbrush. He was present in the new Mario Bros. titles, and he could take advantage of the Koopa Clown car. He would have illusion-based fighting. And we also need more villains. Again, we already have a lot of Mario reps, and he might do better as an assist trophy or a stage boss. Ridley. He's the main villain in the Metroid series, and he appears in most Metroid games. He was a boss and trophy in previous editions, and the Metroid series could use more reps. Many people consider him too big to be a playable character. He was a boss character in Brawl, and he was hinted at being a boss in the Pyrosphere stage. Silux. He'll have unique abilities, as in, he won't be a Samus clone. He was a standout, playable character from the six introduced in Metroid Prime Hunters. And he appears as a trophy in previous Smash Bros. title. He only appeared in one Metroid title, and that was back in 2006. He might do better as an assist trophy, and he doesn't have as big as a following as Ridley or Dark Samus. Crystal. We definitely need more Star Fox reps, and some more female reps. She would have a staff gameplay, so she won't be another Fox clone. There is a new Star Fox in development for the Wii U, and Crystal has been a trophy in previous Smash Bros. titles. The game is close to release, and Star Fox hasn't gotten any reps confirmed yet, other than Fox himself. And she might be overlooked for another character like Falco or Wolf. Bandana D. 
He was a playable character in Return to Dreamland, and he would have spear-based combat, so he won't be like a Kirby clone or something. And DDD no longer throws Waddle Dees, he now throws Gordos. Sakurai doesn't like to include too many reps from his own series, and Waddle Dees already appear as an enemy in Smash Run. Gino. He's one of the most requested characters. He has a unique moveset made from the RPG attacks, and he made a cameo in the Mario & Luigi series. He's from a game made in partnership with Square. We already have a lot of Mario reps, and he only played a supporting role in one game, Bayonetta. There's a new Bayonetta game coming out soon. We need more female reps, and she would definitely have a unique moveset. She comes from a mature series, which may raise the rating of Smash Bros, or disappoint fans if she has to be toned down. And her game was originally released on Sony and Microsoft consoles before it was part of Nintendo. Chibi Robo! He's a pretty unique character, and he would have a pretty unique moveset. And he recently had a 3DS game. He may appear too small in the game, or have to be scaled up. Okay, so that's our list of potential newcomers. Please let us know if there's any facts that we have missed, and we'll add them to our list. Are there any other newcomers you'd like to see in? Let us know, and thanks for watching! Walk, Walk through, through reviews! reviews.